This one's called On a High Course Like This. I listened to a hunter from Africa say, all life is sacred. And he said that after separating a small, thin, non-venomous snake from around a large African hawk-like bird's neck. Because you see, the bird attacks snakes, but that snake couldn't eat that large bird once it died. That would have been a senseless death. All life is sacred, you say. So I couldn't help but think, as a hunter, do you pray for the sacred dead after you've killed it? I mean, I don't usually vocalize when I'm on a high horse like this. And I've had to explain myself to meat eaters that these aren't leather shoes I'm wearing. I'm vegetarian, though I still have to feign a smile and commiserate with meat eaters slaughtering animals because, you see, I would look like a fool for having beliefs. People don't like to hear about a moral choice different from their own. I mean, we're Americans. If it's not human, or maybe a dog or a cat, eat it. It's that simple. But I married a hunter, a Marine who served our country, and he told me that every time he killed an animal, a part of him felt a regretful twinge of pain after he killed his prey. The prey that he searched for with a weapon he could use before anything got close enough to be an enemy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting on my high horse again. <laughs> it's convenient that people can get their kill from the grocery store without getting any blood on their hands. Anything to stop everyone from thinking about what they're doing. Because I've heard that killing something makes you feel something. And I thought... Ooh. <laughs> nice. I make a point to end it. My thoughts. And it, yeah. Like you expect like something more. It's like, no, plate. guess what? Then, you know, yeah, think for yourself. You think for yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. So, yeah, that was the Great.